the lights are on as Barbados enters the month of its 50th anniversary. And in sports, Jason Holder's late burst puts the West Indies on top in the third test. The CBC Headline News, brought to you by Digicel, Barbados' fastest 4G network. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. And a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News. And our top story, the National Union of Public Workers is tonight threatening industrial action if government does not schedule a meeting by tomorrow to address concerns regarding an issue of demotion at the Environmental Health Department. Now, that specific issue involved NUPW President Akani McDowell, who was acting in a senior position in that department but was recently reverted to his substantive position. NUPW General Secretary Rosalind Smith says they have exchanged correspondence with the ministry concerning the issue but are not satisfied with the response given. Ms. Smith tells CBC News they have met with the union's executive and have been given all the all clear to do whatever they deem necessary. Council met yesterday and unanimously gave a decision that we embark on any kind of action we deem necessary to bring a resolution to Brother McDowell's issue. Um, written before, we still believe that the issue is um, a serious one and we should really be given that meeting. You cannot just brush off and say, well, I'm too busy, I'll look at you next week or something like that. So we're saying that some provision has to be made for us to meet to discuss whether Matt does matter. Failing that, we will embark on the action that will bring government to the table. Well, Ms. Smith says the NUPW has also called an urgent meeting with all health officers tomorrow at 10 in the morning. We will not be holding back any action unless we have a meeting. This matter is very fundamental and it has implications for the wider public service. And we are saying that we need to, if we are to be moving forward as a union and a government, that we need to have dialogue. We're not in a social partnership just for being in a partnership. And government has to respect the unions and involve them in any decision making. Tourism Minister Richard Seeley says Barbados is not in a position that it can afford to take climate change lightly. His comments came as the lower house continued debate on the green scoping study. Mr. Seeley says the study is visionary and will also help with the reduction of the import bill for fossil fuels. The mega money, $800 million or so that we spend importing fossil fuels, we could save that. And of course, that will have a serious impact in terms of creating some more space in our fall reserves or maybe some other activities. And, and we have to do that. Apart from that, of course, there's the, the uh, reduced costs from carbon emissions and the fact that, um, that we are told solar water heaters, 35,000 of which are in Barbados, um, save us something like $100 million in foreign exchange. Member of Parliament for St. Thomas, Cynthia Ford, is concerned about the high number of abandoned and overgrown lots in that parish. She says the bush not only blocks the road, but also poses several environmental threats. One of the lots she singled out is the land at Edge Hill, which was donated for food security about two years ago. It hurts, Mr. Speaker, that to this day, more than two years later, all that you can see in that land is grass, and the plantation owner cut off the hydro to avoid people from not being able to drive to safety. It is for food security under the aegis of the University of the West Indies. The whole of St. Thomas requires urgent attention when it comes to the government getting some land and giving the landless using up those 20 or 30 acres of land and give those young men and women who want to work in agriculture. Well, less than an hour ago, the city of Bridgetown was illuminated in the island's national colors. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart, along with three Barbadians who were born on November 30th, 1966, 
flicked the switch around 6.20 this evening at the Sadakor Life Inc. lighting ceremony. Hundreds were on hand at National Heroes Square to witness the lighting and fireworks display. This year's ceremony was held under the theme, Celebrating Who We Are. And Chairperson of the 50th Independent Celebration Secretariat, Senator Maxine McLean, said that light has significant meaning in Barbadian lives. As we celebrate and as we move into the final months of this year's celebration of the important landmark of 50th anniversary of independence, we are reminded by the exhortations of the Prime Minister that we do have to seek light. The light of reflection, renewal, and remembrance and commitment to all that has made us a great nation, even though we are small. In his feature address, Culture Minister Stephen Lashley said the country is displaying true patriotism during the celebrations. The response to this and other activities has been nothing short of overwhelming as businesses, schools, private citizens and volunteer groups have all come together to showcase their nationalism that is indeed beyond recall. We as Barbadians indeed have much to be thankful for and we are called to national duty to celebrate this important milestone of our country. A local insurance broker has pledged to continue building on the strong foundation left by the island's forefathers. It is CGM Gallagher Insurance Brokers, the latest company to come on board with the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation's Guardians of the Heritage Initiative. Neil Shepard, a claims supervisor there, says the values that have sustained Barbados as a nation have helped the company to build a culture of integrity, community and excellence, and it intends to continue this process. We too at CGM Gallagher are proud to note our positive influence internationally. CGM Gallagher, as a major player in the insurance market locally and internationally, is among a group of companies listed among the world's best ethical companies for 2016. And this is an accolade that we have accomplished for the last five years. Barbados has been built on a strong community spirit. And as a corporate citizen, we encourage and foster this trait through the adoption of the Irvin Wilson School. Additionally, we continuously contribute to various children charities as we buy into the concept of taking a village to raise a child. And producer presenter here, Anthony Admiral Nelson, thanked the insurance brokers for coming on board, noting that the two have similar philosophies. It's great to have CGM Gallagher as a part of this wonderful parade of companies and parade of flags. The interesting thing here is that we've been in this business for quite a while. We've been CGM Gallagher over 40 years, protecting the Caribbean. They are, of course, insurance brokers, and you can see them all around the region. And, of course, the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, you know the story, we cover the entire region with our broadcast. So I think this is a wonderful combination of companies. We certainly wish you all a happy independence, happy 50th, and we hope that we can continue this relationship for the next 50 years. A new initiative has been launched to recognize ordinary heroes who, despite making a positive impact on their community, are unlikely to ever be recognized by the traditional honor system. Now, you might not recognize them because they're just like you and me. But Quartz Barbados Limited and the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation have joined together to launch the inaugural Quartz CBC Heroes campaign. Managing Director of Quartz Barbados, Trisha Tanis, says there is a difference between an actual hero and an ordinary hero. She says the program is designed to recognize their selfless work. To be the Quartz CBC Ordinary Hero 2016, you must make a selfless a unique contribution to the community in a positive and lasting way that is also developmental and sustainable. This contribution can be through a program that directly impacts upon and engages your community and provides a long-term benefit certainly for others who are in need. Additionally, the program can provide re rehabilitation for delinquent or vulnerable groups, provide a service for members of the community that directly improves their lives, or just be random but regular acts of kindness and extreme generosity towards a particular group. These are such some of the examples of the kind of hero acts that we're looking for. And Director of Sales and Marketing here at the CBC, Diane Fort, says the corporation was quick to partner with Court Barbados when hearing about the campaign. And 
CBC has long been involved in supporting the community at different levels and in many different ways. Um, there are so many people in our community that can use a helping hand, a friendly word, and CBC sees it as a part of our responsibility to do just that. I think a lot of times when we think of a hero, we think of the person who rushes into a burning building uh, to save someone, the person who runs into the ocean to save someone from drowning, and those are indeed heroic acts. But as Mrs. Stanis started to say, or said in her speech, the, there are ordinary people going about their lives. If we think of life the way that we live it, we get up every morning, we have breakfast, we get our children off to school, we go to work, we do those things that are part of living. For some people, that is not a reality, or it's a very difficult reality. Well, stay with us. We'll have more news right after the break. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star one five three number sign to sign up to Digicel today. More great cities just got closer. The Scotiabank Aero Platinum Mastercard is now even better. Fly to New York, Miami, Orlando, and Fort Lauderdale with just 20,000 Scotia points. With your new Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard, you'll receive a welcome bonus of 10,000 Scotia points so you can enjoy the cities you love most sooner than ever. Apply today. Call 426-7000 or visit your nearest branch. You wish to celebrate and style this independence. Yes, and in color too. Harris Paints is giving you everything you wish this independence. With up to 30% off select Harris products. Plus a chance to win your share of $10,000 cash in weekly draws. Get one entry form with every $50 spent in Harris products. New paint job inside and out. And cash too. Sweet. Harris. See Press or Harris Paints social media for more. Get everything you wish this independence with Harris Paints. Happy 50th Anniversary Barbados! Fifty-six-year-old Donna Evening of Newton Terrace Christchurch had to be taken by ambulance to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital after she was involved in an accident with an SUV driven by 29-year-old Angel Lewis of Enterprise Gardens in Christchurch. Our Shane Jones was on the scene in Oystens. We're here at the Southern Plaza Complex where there's been a rather bizarre accident with a Honda CRV and a Toyota El Touring. Maria Bruce was an eyewitness of that accident. It was only the vehicle and the lady on the ground. No one else was there. What was going through your mind when you saw it come up there? Could have been me. It could have been me. Just thank God that it wasn't me. Did you saw the vehicle hit her? No, because it was crossing the road. I just noticed the, the shows. And then when I, I saw her on the ground. Mm. And then on the ground she was writhing in pain? Yes, she was in pain. She was squealing in pain. And can you tell me anything about the driver? What was the driver like? The driver came out the vehicle and she was she was crying too. Actually she was crying harder than the lady. So did she say anything? No, no. At that time we were just fighting to get um, the ambulance, trying to get the ambulance for her. Just reminding everyone to be extremely vigilant and careful on the road. Shane Jones, CBC News. Well, November 25th has been dubbed Crash Free Friday. President of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Charmaine Roland Bowen, today unveiled the initiative geared at increased safety on our roads. The 25th of November, as we have designated um, Crash Free Friday, in which we will be encouraging all persons using the road on that day. You know, we're encouraging them, you know, to um, be conscious of what they're going to be doing. 
Now, both state-run and privately owned entities pledge their support to the cause by signing several large placards. As an added incentive, persons who pledge their commitment to Crash Free Friday will be eligible to win several prizes, such as payment of their road tax and driver's license. Ms. Roland Bowen also thanked Andrew Clark of the Adopt a Kilometer program, who will donate two of their signs, one in Warrens and the other in Kendall Hill, to the Road Safety Association. He's going to be giving us or uh, sponsoring for us a a, a DAPA kilometer one of those signs. Mm -hmm. And I told him that this is going to be the most widely read sign. Because on that sign is going to be saying um, how many fatalities are on our roads today and it's going to be comparing it to the previous year. Well, the island has seen a record low number of fatalities due to vehicular accidents so far this year. The revelation from Assistant Superintendent with the Royal Barbados Police Force, Ronald Stanford. He was speaking as the Barbados Road Safety Association launched its month of activities today at the Alpha 126 Traffic School. So far, up to the end of October, we have had eight fatalities so far. And that is when compared with the same period of last year, there were 20. So, so far for the year, we had this a quite a significant drop. Now, despite this, he cautioned the traveling public to remain vigilant as visitor arrivals are expected to increase for the 50th Independence celebrations. Well, still to come.